up and I am not feeling great at all. So I'm going to be using uh, Master Formel and Master Rodriguez to kind of demonstrate some of this stuff. I love you guys, but I don't want to give you any funk either. Okay. So um, we're going to start uh, a little bit vague this morning intentionally. And as we go, it's going to become more and more clear on what we're doing. So if you feel confused, that's okay. We all are confused, right? <laughs> but uh, there's some things, there's some deficiencies that I've noticed that um, some martial arts schools don't necessarily cover. And that's really what we're going to be focused on this morning. Now, like you've heard in all these seminars, you know, if you see some stuff and you're like, I'm not a fan of that, that's okay. Um, kind of the cool part about this weekend is that we could try stuff that we wouldn't normally do, right? That's a little bit out of your normal wheelhouse. So um, go on this adventure with me. I think you're going to like it. So the first technique, um, we're going we're gonna to have the street in mind today, okay? Um, a lot of schools, and I'm, I'm not uh, saying this is right or wrong, but a lot of schools will do this kind of punching where you step forward and you punch at the same time. There is no street fight that will ever, ever do that. There's also no street fight that holds out a punch and stays there, right? There's constant motion happening, people are swinging. It's a high stress situation. Now, I'm a chiropractor now, but I was a paramedic before that. And I've seen a lot of street fights and I've noticed some consistencies in those fights. That's what we're gonna talk about today. So whenever your partner punches at you, I want you to keep that right leg back and just throw out a right punch for now, okay? So. So you're punching your defending. This is called trapping. So she blocks with that lead hand, catches with the other, and then strikes. Can you do that again, please? So he's punching with the right, she's blocking with the left. Now this is not gonna stop him. He's strong. Me and him have fought many times. He's strong, right? This is just to get him something to think about. It's a little bit of a distraction. What she's not just doing is this. She's not just high five in his chest. She's striking it. Do it one more time. Now from here, she's going to take his back. We want to control that neck and extend him back. See how he is off balance? He's not completely upright. He's not forward, right? He's off balance. If she wanted to get rid of him, she has options. She could crank that cervical spine. She could slam him on the ground. Okay. So this is going to be the first technique I want you to get with a partner and just rep this a few times. It's not too crazy, but we're going to build off of this, okay? A little different than what some of your schools normally do, right? Um, this is a setup for where we're going next. How many of you have ever seen an actual street fight? Okay, now I'm going to tell you a little uh, perspective, maybe. We talked about perspective yesterday with uh, Master Marisa Center, right? Um, I've seen a lot of street fights. Very few of them have ever been one-on-one. -on -one. Street fights are not in a cage. They don't have rules, right? And, and the thing about this is that very few men specifically are man enough to take on another man alone. Very few. It's always their buddies backing them up. Now, there's probably some cowards in that, right? But there's always people backing them up. They're ready to go. So could you roll on the ground and, and try to get a submission? You could, as the other guy's getting your head in, right? So what we're gonna do, and uh, let's see. Oh yeah, of course. So what we're gonna do is now, it's one against two people. You're gonna do that same setup that you just did, that same attack. So in this case, Master Flamel is fighting these two guys here. He punches first because he's, he's got courage. She takes his back. Now the whole goal here is to use him as a body shield, right? So as he's moving around or trying to get in, she's keeping the other person between them, all right? If he's going to hit somebody, the goal is to make uh, Mr. George hit Master Rodriguez so that she's protected. So now I want you to break up in groups of three. I encourage you to work with people you're not used to, right? Break up in groups of three and just rotate this. See if you can keep that person between you. Don't worry about attacking yet. Just just make them work for it. Keep them moving. Keep them off balance. You guys good? Maybe hit that grab you to get hit and for you to get hit, right? So we don't often think about you know this this situation where we have multiple people, but that's something to consider. If you've got that third person and you try to go down to the ground, you need to have some way of finishing that quickly because the other guy's coming fast, all right? Now, this next situation is a little bit different. Oh, uh, ma'am. 
Sure. This next situation is a little bit different. So in this case, we've got two guys. Now, typically with a with a group fight, just broadly speaking, you'll have one guy that's really brave or drunk, and one guy that's the coward, right? So the other guy's ready to just brawl, whereas his friend is kind of like, oh, I'm here, I'm backing up, but I'm here, right? So we're gonna work that idea off of doing grabs right now. Now, not everybody grabs in real life, okay? It, it's kind of one of those things that if somebody grabs you, well, now it's time for the hot keto demo to begin. You know what I mean? That's what we train for a lot. Um, but we're going to go off of grabs just in the beginning, okay? So we've got two guys coming in against Master Flamel. Now, in this case, and I'm, I'm trying to say this as a nicely as I can. If you have two guys coming after a young lady, they're not doing it just to do it. They have a purpose and they have a reason. So she doesn't have time to play, right? She's got to take care of the situation quickly. So um, one of them is going to be the brave one, one of them is going to be the coward. The brave one will rush in and try to grab her. <laughs> guy she has two options right she can either make him into that body shield or she can get rid of them this first round we're gonna make him into that body shield okay go ahead there this fight on my knee break perfect <laughs> perfect and she kind of got rid of him right she it's, it's always nice to throw things at people especially if it's another body all right so now I, I want you guys to rep that a few times you've got one guy who's brave one guy who's a coward right mr. George is not a coward by the way but I want you guys I want you guys to rep this a few times okay one two three and then I need Kai and let's do Oh, this will be nice, Ben. So we got a father-daughter team here that's going to team up with Master Rodriguez. <laughs> <laughs> <didn't see> <laughs> so, <laughs> much more commonly in real fights is punching, okay? I don't know how many real fights you guys have seen, but very few people punch in a front stance. It doesn't happen, okay? It's usually sloppy. Very few people are actually trained fighters. Now, that does exist. It's more common than it used to be right but very few people are truly trained fighters and you can watch based off of somebody's body movement if they've been trained or not if you see somebody bouncing around a lot and they look nervous they're probably not trained it's the guy that sits there and waits that you're probably afraid of right so now we're gonna rep punches so we were on grabs now we're gonna do some punches so in this case same thing we've got one person who's ready to go they're a little more confident the other ones in the background ready to go if they have to be. Now for this scenario, I don't want you to go to the body shield. Get rid of the first one quickly so you can go on to the second one. All right? So you guys are gonna punch him. Whatever happens, happens. <laughs> Together? We'll see. Okay. Oh, nice. Well done. Now, I want you to pay attention to how he landed. You don't have to do this exact technique. I'm giving you guys room to play here. But he's in a position where he maintains control and he can still look around to see if somebody else is coming. That way, if we need to get rid of him, he can and he's ready for that next person. So don't just think about, can I take this person out? Think about, I need to be ready for what's next. All right, so now let's rep that. One, two, three. All right, guys. So I want to discuss targeting a little bit. Master Ellis, may I use you, sir? I want to discuss targeting a little bit. Now, one of the nice things about being a chiropractor is I've studied a lot of anatomy, at least once or twice, right? And um, if you want to level up your game as a martial artist, learn anatomy. You don't have to be a doctor, okay, but have some basic understanding of I'm not just hitting the abdomen, okay, but what am I hitting? Okay, that's the liver, that's the spleen. I need to know what am I touching, right? Now, don't get me wrong, I love flashy techniques just like everybody else. They look great, they look cool. But you gotta think about, this is a survival situation. This is not a demo, okay? So if we're fighting, I cannot just play with this guy and try to get in somewhere. 
I've got to think about what am I hitting. It doesn't have to be flashy. A nice roundhouse to that knee tickles, right? Break that MCL. Come in. Hit that ear. Hit that nose, okay? I want you to think about what are my targets. Not that I'm just hitting them, but what am I hitting and why? You follow me? So in this case, we'll use you, sir, and then I need two others. One. Come on in. Let's do it. So in this case, I've got three guys. Now, the, the problem here is that I'm not a very big guy, and I don't think I'm intimidating, right? So I've got these three guys here, and I'm trying to size them up and trying to figure them out. And you guys know I love you, right? But, but I'm thinking about, okay, who is my biggest threat right now? We've got Young Buck here who is vicious, right? But I've probably made a couple more mistakes than he has, so I could probably take him out a little easier. So I don't necessarily want to play with these guys. I want to get rid of them quickly. Right now, it's three against one. So I've got to size him up so I can take him out. These two guys look like they've seen a couple of days, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Listen, the old bucks are old for a reason, right? right. But I love these guys. But wait, you, have to, you have to think about this now. If I let them circle me, go ahead and come around. If I let them circle me, now I'm at a disadvantage. I don't know which one's going to attack, right? But if they're coming at me, I can control the way they move. I don't know how you guys practice your blocking, but in our art, in our school, we can control where somebody punches based off of what we give them. It's psychological warfare. If I put my hand down here, I give him a target here. If I do this, I'm giving him somewhere to hit. I can do the same thing psychologically with where they move. Because they're trying to circle around me, if I come over here, I've prevented them from coming around me and I'm taking out somebody. Now I can take care of these two guys easily. Even if I can't grab them, I can take care of them pretty easily. Okay? So now I want you to get in groups of four. And I want you to practice sizing each other up. Think about, okay, who can I take out first, right? I know we have limited space to the best that you can. Try not to get circled up though. Questions? One, two, three. Listen up, listen up. So now we have a new situation. I need two guys that are big and strong. I'm pretty big and strong. I'll take guys. <laughs> Sorry, I said strong. <laughs> All right. So in this case, in this case, they are trying to abduct Master Flamel. This is a serious thing here, okay? So, right in this room, we have to work with our space just a little bit. So we'll we'll say that two of blocks of these mats worth is the room that you're going to work in, okay? So, go ahead and start in here, ma'am. Sure. If they can get her outside of two of these blocks, she's dead. So if they can both grab her, I know you're, you wouldn't really do this, but go ahead and grab her. Oh my God. Try to drag her off. Yeah. Keep going, keep going. Yeah. 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 Nice. So if they can get her off of two of these blocks, then she's done, right? What you, what you can't do, what you cannot do is freak out. Right, this is a scary situation. This is why we train for the freak out, right? I know I, I love having fun in martial arts, guys, but we have to realize the reality of what we do and why we do it, right? Stress is sometimes a good thing. It prepares you for real life. So if they can get her out of these two blocks, she's done, all right? Now, she still did the sizing up. I don't know if you guys noticed, but whenever they came in, she was like, okay, who can I get rid of? And she chose Kai. Let's get rid of Kai. Boom. Done. Right? And then she took the old bug. <laughs> but, uh, I guarantee you at the end, they regretted trying to take her. Right? It's kind of like the guy who tries to rob you, and at the end, he's like, no, here's my wallet. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so I want you guys now to work in groups of three, and I want you to use that. If you can get out of these two blocks, then you're done. All right? Take care of them before they get out of that. Questions? One, two, three. All right, guys, so a lot of schools teach this whole concept of finish and run, right? But that's all well and good until it doesn't work. 
right? And honestly, if you guys see me running, there's a problem, right? I see people running down the street for, for being healthy, and I'm like, what are they running from? <laughs> But running isn't always a good thing, and sometimes you don't have that option. So now we're gonna work with this whole idea of mob mentality, right? So you have a whole group of people coming after you. Um, both of you, 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 sir, can you help me? So now it's me against these five guys. None of these guys are small. Um, Burgers and fries. Five guys, burgers and fries. <laughs> None of these guys are small, right? I don't have time to play. I don't have time to play. If I play around, if one of them gets a hold of me, I'm done, right? And we're also assuming they don't have a weapon because the vast majority of guys carry pocket knives, right? So I've got to get rid of these guys. They're coming in. I want to make sure to use my environment. Notice I'm not letting them get behind me. I know a lot of people don't like the feeling of being cornered, but it has its advantages. Because if I'm in corner, I know nobody can come here. Right? Is it scary? Yes. Is it realistic? Yes. So we come back. These guys are coming in on me. I've got to size up. This, my friends, is the equalizer. This is what is the difference between living and dying. You can train all your life and hope that you can fight one or two people. But if you get five people who are remotely competent, and IQ more than five, right, then your chances drastically go down. So now we have equalizers, all right? I want groups of five working together because of numbers. One knife per group, okay? Now, guys, I want you to remember something. This is a razor blade. I got more. Right? It's a giant razor blade. So whenever we're slicing and cutting, that's going to the bone. One of the worst fights I've ever seen was a couple, married couple, who had gotten in an argument. No. They both had knives. And I got there and they were both eviscerated. Cut from here to here, everything coming out. I had to fly the guy out because he was worse. I had to take the woman in my ambulance. Whenever I got in there, she pulled the knife on me. And I had to take the knife from her, right? Knives are no joke. You can take, if I was to hit Dorian, uh, if I was to slam Dorian here, it might break a bone, maybe. It's gonna hurt, but he's not done. But this, you guys ever accidentally cut yourself, paper cut, that sort of thing? That'll make a grown man cry, won't it? <laughs> right? This is a razor blade. I'm thinking about my targets. I'm not just slicing to slice. Is this gonna hurt if I cut his butt cheek? Yes. Is it gonna kill him? No. Probably not. He might have a pimp with the rest of his life. <laughs> right? But it's not going to kill him. I have to think about targets. Now, in this case, I'm not saying go out and murder people. This is self defense. Right? They are trying to kill you. So, they shouldn't have attacked you. <laughs> think about your targeting. Okay? All right. Get to it. One, two, three. One. What we're going to do is. Uh, and Dorian, you start in the middle, please. Guys, surrounding. Like, like circle, circle up around him. Around him, I'm just rolling. So, what we're gonna do here is I want you guys, four of you are gonna circle one person. You're gonna have a ringleader, right? So everybody's gonna have a number. So I'll say one, two, three, four. And the person in the middle is gonna have a knife. You have a knife, sir? No, here you go. I do okay. The person in the middle is going to have a knife. Whenever the ringleader calls the number, that person is going to attack. So he doesn't know who is who, right? But he knows the attack is coming. A Hapkido stylist should be able to attack in any 360 degree circle, meaning we don't have to be facing our opponent. If our opponent's back here, 
we can kick them, right? You don't have to always be facing your opponent. So I want you to think about that in this case. Now we're trying to get rid of them. We're not playing. All right, two. Three. Four. One. That's how it's going to work. You'll have one ringleader that's calling out numbers. Okay? This needs to be stressful. Follow me? Yes, sir. All right, guys. So hopefully that gave you a little bit of perspective. You know, it's, it's kind of why we're here. That's one of the beautiful things about the KMAF is that you get a lot of different perspectives, right? Um, there's a lot of knowledge in this room, a lot of people that have been training a lot more than I have, longer than I have, and it's cool to hang out with you guys and learn. Um, all I wanted to do today was give you a little concept, a little idea of, you know, it's not always in isolation, one-on-one, -on -one, in a nice air-conditioned space with matted surfaces, right? Life is real. So you guys killed it, you did a fantastic job. I did want to show one person, man, come on up. So Kai has done an amazing job um, this weekend I've been watching and every single time it's time to throw down uh, Kai's been ready to go. So I just wanted to give you a little something All right. All right, guys. It was a pleasure hanging out with you. Thank you for listening to me ramble and thank you for all of your hard work